Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea, welcome back to another Hearthstone cast. And today we have in the top right as our Red Terran player playing for Team Shopify Rebellion, none other than Beyond. And in the top left as our Blue Zerg player playing for Kaizy Gaming, it's going to be Solar. We'll be playing on one of the new maps called Stargazer, and Stargazer, for the people that are not aware, has an inside base or a pocket base as we would call it this base has um, two 10 mineral patches that can be mined Ooh, beyond going for the cc right next to it that's cool and has a relatively easy third base as well now i've seen this base being taken as the natural and this is the third before i've seen this base being taken as a fourth base as well or terrans take this as their third base and then just build an orbital on their fourth as well so there's a lot of options for the Terran players but it feels like Beyond wants to play it safe in the early game says hey I'm just opening up with a marine over here I want to get a quick factory as well oh it's no that's not a factory that's a barracks my apologies okay this is a very odd opener it's a two on one type of build here with that CC on well I wanted to say the high ground but I guess this is the the middle ground this is the high ground and this is the low ground you have three levels on this map seems like this base and this base are extremely similar in their uh, how high their cliffs are, where they're located on. Meanwhile, Solar's opening up with a fast triple hatch, going for the line bases and keeping this base for well, perhaps later. I have to wait and see exactly what both of these players are planning on doing. But the fact that Bian got away with this without scouting is, of course, very comfortable for him. It allows him to get a little bit of extra money with a build order that already is very tight in money that often is extremely nice to have. And the reason why this build is so tight in money is because you have almost constant marine production, initially from uh, a reactor barrack, so two marines at a time. Later, uh, a second barracks gets added, so you have three marines at a time. And you're also getting this extra tech in the form of a factory, followed up by a starport and then a reactor. You have almost constant SCV production. So often you'll need to cut either an SCV here or there, or you'll need to cut some marines like we're seeing right now. So literally every mineral that you can save is extremely important. And the fact that Beyond managed to save some minerals by not scouting is actually just super helpful for him. So he starts moving out here with a small force of marines. Now, this could mean two things. He either wants to really try and get some of these overlords, uh, to snipe him down or he wants to make his opponent believe that this is a 3 rex opener this type of move out is extremely common with 3 rex openers uh, it's a build that Maru has played Cure has played a bunch in the past as well and it wouldn't surprise me if Solar kind of you know, like he kind of buys it and says, okay, this looks like a 3-rex. Might have a different response to a 3-rex than he would have to a 2-1-1. Which is the actual build order that we're seeing here right now. Link speed has finished up though. As we see Solar moving around with a couple of links. Trying to scout how many marines truly are moving out. These marines are just going to be standing at the watchtower for now. Links will be capable of scouting the fact that there's a factory done. That's kind of a big scout. Although he did not see the starport or the reactor. So still could believe that, well, perhaps... Perhaps, you know, it is just a 3-rex. Uh, Links are already being produced, more queens on the way as well. And one of the main things, of course, is going to be queen positioning here. If you're not quite sure what's happening, it seems like Solar is very well aware, though. Has majority of his queens in the main base, has a Ling in this, in this position near the ramp, or near the bridge, I should say. This is not a ramp, this is a bridge with purple water. Uh, no Links on the low ground here. So this is still going to come as a little bit of a surprise, at least. I think this is just legit 60 marines, isn't it? It's a lot of marines. Yeah, this is 60 marines in two medevacs. Very tight timing that Bion is hitting here. Stims forward immediately. Links are moving into position. These queens cannot be targeted down. Two marines have already died. Medevac is barely going to get away. 14 HP remaining. Third medevac gets sent out. There is a mine. There's six marines in there. I'm not a huge fan of losing these two marines there, like Bion just did. Because that, that means that his follow-up push, which usually is the the hard-hitting one, the one with the, the third medevac and hopefully combat shield at some point as well, that one is supposed to hit extremely hard, and now it's going to hit a little bit less hard. Third medevac is out, mine is going to burrow up, we might see a scan here, a couple of creep tumors being taken out. We'll have to wait and see exactly where the scan is going to be placed. Okay, right in the middle, 
barely misses that topside tumor. A little bit frustrating here for the Terran player. Mine is going to burrow up. We'll get the hit off on... Yep, one of these queens is going to get taken out. And the mine survives. That's a pretty big deal. Not quite sure if these links can just take out that mine as it's running away from the creep. I think the answer there seems to be no. Can we get a snipe on the baneling? The answer there also seems to be no. So mine gets away and so does the baneling. Centrifugal hooks is already being built. We have a spire on the way here for Solar who has not constructed any evolution chambers yet. And without any evolution chambers whatsoever, it's going to be difficult to catch up in the upgrade. So we're potentially looking at a 2-2 timing here for Beyond that could do a lot of damage. But before that even arrives, this initial pressure is already... Kind of difficult to deal with for Solar. Mine is going to get taken out before it gets hit. Great target fire on these Bane Links. All but one get taken out. And a decent chunk of Marines get saved as well. There's a lot of money in the bank for Solar who has not constructed a fort base yet either. Completely stuck on three hatches right now. That means that his injects need to be perfect. Double Evos will be constructed. By the time this Spire finishes, I think there's going to be about seven to 800 gas in the bank. And that means that eight Mutas will most likely hit the field. That is going to be great. Will allow Solar to push back some of these Marines. But the fact that there's no fourth base yet, is just kind of painful. Another Queen gets taken out. Ooh, that's the third Queen, I think, that fell there. Yep, three Queens have died so far in this game. So a very good start for Beyond here. I do like this. Very active on the map. Fort base on the way. Fort base for the Terran. Quicker than the fort base for the Zerg. This is extremely rare to see. And these nine Mutas, they're not just controlling Mutas anymore. These Mutas need to deal some damage. They need to deal a, a crap ton of damage. There's a turret already up in this natural base for Beyond. A turret is being constructed in the third base for Beyond as well. We have a second factory on the way, which means that Thor production can start the moment that Tech Lab finishes. We have constantly uh, mines being churned out. And to make matters even worse for Solar here, his 1-1 steel has not even started. Here we finally go. There's going to be a large, large chunk of time in which Beyond will just be up two upgrades. Whether that's going to be 1-1 against 0-0 or 2-2 against 1-1, uh, doesn't really matter. It's going to be a very large amount of time in which, in my mind, Beyond is going to be behind. Oh, sorry, Solar will be behind in upgrades. Ooh. Perhaps can take out one of these eBay's. That would definitely help. Marines coming to the rescue, though. One Mira's going to get taken out. Second Mira's going to get taken out as well. Solar needs to be so careful. Does not have that much money whatsoever. 144 supply against 147. I love the fact that there's a mine at this watchtower. I love even more that there's a Marine walking over there as well. Allowing Beyond to see basically the entire top side of the map. And saying, hey, if there's no Mira's moving towards that top side... That means that I can just try and find the Mutas with my Marine Force near the bottom side. Because you're most likely going to rotate. So Solar either needs to keep these Mutas at home. Or there's a potential that Pion, if he's quick, could take out one or two Mutas again. Look at this one Marine. Scouting Marine is going to find these Mutalis. Pion immediately starts moving in position. And at the same time, Solar just hasn't dealt that much damage yet. I love these Marine spreads here out of Pion. Looking for for just anything, wanting to know where his opponent's army is. And he's really using this marine force as a way to catch these Muras, rather than being very aggressive out on the map. He says, hey, I have quicker upgrades. Sure, your worker count is a little bit higher, but that wasn't the case for a very long time. Your fort base isn't even done yet. So uh, a, a big chunk of that drone force is long distance mining, and has been long distance mining. We now see a little bit of creep denial, more mines moving forward as well. Beyond forgetting his plus two armor is a pretty big error, actually. Oh no, never mind, it's over here. I thought it would always move be together, but apparently that's not the case. Concuss of Shell's about to finish up. Mutas are trying to move in towards his natural, but with four turrets, well, and make that five, as well as a bunch of marines there, it's just not going to be possible. I love that these rocks got taken out. And Beyond is just really playing some positional Starcraft tour, saying, hey, I want to keep this little high ground, I want to make sure that no run bys can happen through the middle, through the bottom sides. Like, there's basically this, this ring of vision around the bases, or around uh, just in the middle of the map. Ooh, that was a big mine hit. 20 kills there on that one mine. First Thor is moving out as well, there's still a decent chunk of Widow mines as well. Ooh. Beautiful looking mine hit. Although a couple of these veins did get bigger connections than I think Beyond ideally would have wanted. He's pushing forward very aggressively right now. I do not think this is necessarily the correct call. Scans to take out a little more creep and is looking to actually move up this ramp. He really does need to be careful at this moment. This is this is no joking matter. There's a lot of banelings for it. 45 banelings. 
Upgrade still, yes, our favorite for Beyond. 2-2 two -two against 1-1. One -one. Couple of Mutas once again, gonna get taken out. So that really has not achieved anything with these Mutas yet. But this army is what I'm really afraid of. Oh, we're gonna see a massive pickup. And with the Mutas coming back, that could actually be kind of painful. Mine hits are going to be not that big whatsoever. I think 7, 8 links end up dying their total. All of these mines get cleared. Two mines remain on the map right now. Plus three attack starts for Beyond. A fifth base gets rebuilt after this one got cancelled. We're working on four orbitals here, by the way. So I, I'm a huge fan of that. Just getting a lot of money in. Allowing the ability to scan extra, extra mules as well. She's super useful for Terran often. Of course, if your supply block, use those supply drops. Two more command centers will turn into orbitals. And I think this bottom one most likely will turn into a planetary. But that means that 12 minutes into the game, we'll already have six orbital commands, which is just a huge deal. I do not believe that Bian can actually successfully take an engagement here, as the mine count just is not sufficient enough. The position is nice, it's on the bottom of a ramp. Um, but this ramp is pretty wide as well. There are possibilities for flanks at the same time, so... Yeah, this feels scary. This feels really scary for Bian here, honestly. His army looks tiny, with a big chunk still being at home. Two Thors are here, so there does not feel comfortable engaging into this. does not want to take a very cost-inefficient fight, which is most likely what would have happened. This army will kind of uh, push these Mutalisks away. Gold's going to get taken out at the same time. Bailing's trying to connect with these Marines. Marauders are standing their ground. Marines get split back. I think everything is going to end up dying here for Beyond. But how cost inefficient was this really? Um, it feels like it was pretty decent for Beyond. Despite him losing basically every single Marine. Mine count is still at 6. The Thor stay alive and the Medivac stay alive. And these are kind of the key units in the compositions. Marines are very easy to rebuild. I mean... We're working off like five barracks with reactor, maybe four barracks with reactor, four with tech lab. So yeah, you're building eight marines at a time, you're building four marauders at a time. These will be easily replenishable. The problem often is with the mines, with the Thors, and with the medevacs, as you can build these, well, two at a time for the medevacs and the mines, and Thors only one at a time. So it often becomes a lot harder. These upgrades need to finish, and I think they will before the mutas get in and start fighting against these ebays. We also at the same time already see Beyond moving back. Oh, mine shot almost is going to connect with his mutal list, but not yet. Or not quite. Or not quite yet. Beyond's army is actually looking pretty massive right now. For a long time it felt like the supply was high, but the army wasn't together. It was just kind of split, and then the Terran army often looks very weak. But here the Terran army is looking extremely strong, and I actually have a pretty good feeling for Beyond at this point. Creep has disappeared from the map. Oh, Thor's going to get surrounded. Mines are going to start burrowing in. There's a lot of danger moving forward. But don't forget, this fight is entirely off creep. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mutalisk almost get caught by this army on the bottom side. Solar is quick enough to figure it out. Three more command centers on the way. I think at least one of them will turn into a planetary here on the bottom side. But the other two might just turn into orbital commands. We have our first ultra out on the map right now as well. It's just going to uh, be one ultra. At least for now, we have the Chitinous Plating, Anabolic Synthesis being researched as we speak. 3-3 three, three on the way, do we have Adrenal? Yep, we do have Adrenal. So upgrades are kind of slowly but surely getting there, but it really is slowly. Slowly but surely. Um, as we have another upgrade lead in this, this period of time right now for Beyond. Medivac count is perhaps lacking a little bit at only 6. Not mind seeing that go up to 8, maybe even 9 here. Oh, this army is uh, running low and the medevac energy also is running low. This right side army out of solar is going to kind of get caught out of position. I don't think these Bailings will get the connections that they initially wanted. Well, but here in the end they actually do get some okay-ish connections. We have one more Ultra on the way. 46 more links as Bion is trying his hardest right now to just completely split the map. And Solar wants to kind of make sure that that doesn't happen. Wants to take that gold base to at least outmine his opponent by a little bit. Because so far the trades just have not been brilliant. Goes, of course, with the snipes. Every snipe is a 200 resource uh, increase on Solar's, uh, on Solar's units lost stamp. So Mutalisks are 100-100, and a snipe can one-shot a Mutalisk. It is a very powerful ability. People often don't realize this, but there is a hard drop-off for the Mutalisk the moment the Ghost arrives on the map. Thors are already good against them, but please don't underestimate the Ghost against Mutalisk. Such a powerful thing to have. Uh-oh, brilliant scan here. Seeing the fact that there's nothing uh, in this base. And also seeing that he did get spotted. So 
is preparing for something right now. He's going to take out this base relatively free, I guess. Can just pick up and leave again as well. Mutas are going to get back home. Oh, there's nothing on the low ground to assist with this for Solar. No anticipation of this scenario happening whatsoever. Seems like uh, five Marines, a Ghost, and two Medivacs are going to be enough to scare away the Mutalisk flock. Meanwhile, the bottom side, I'm not quite sure what happened, but I see a burning command center and a massive Terran army. Probably a couple of links ended up dying here. Thors will stay alive for now. That's a lot of Banelings, isn't it? 43 Banes. Mutas are going to uh, meet up again with this main army. Could perhaps come from two sides as well. Would be super useful. There's so many ghosts here in this army. It's like 10, 12 ghosts. Lots of marauders as well. I love this army. I really do love this army. I'm not gonna lie. I think this is such a powerful army. I'm not even quite sure if Solar can ever engage into this. He's going to try. I'm not quite sure if this was a planned engagement. He's going to connect with these stores with the Banelings. That obviously is the incorrect call. That is extremely cost inefficient. At the same time though, these mutas will take out some of the ghosts that were rallied over here. Uh, a couple of turrets will also get taken out. But at the same time, there's just not enough here on the bottom side. Six more mutas being built. Wants to go back up to 16 muta lists. Banelings will get well, okayish connections as the mines are not here no more. Gold base is going to get taken out for what I believe to be the third time this game. Ooh, can we get some splits? Yes, we can get some splits. This army is looking pretty small, though. And Solar is getting trades. There's no Overseer with this army, which means that these ghosts will get to stay alive and well, do their shooting for as long as their cloak is still in. That is still a pretty darn long time. Overseer now is going to move in. And with these links and Mutalisk, perhaps these ghosts are going to end up falling. Sloppy fight here for Beyond. It was off creep. But majority of his army felt like it just wasn't there. Not enough mines in this composition. And despite the Mutas not being there until the very end, I think this was really good for Solar. Yes, resources lost. Solar is still behind. But he managed to secure the gold. He did not actually lose that gold base again. Which is super useful. Okay, he only lost the gold once. Because this base also died once. And it must be a 1-1. Uh, there are one base over here going down and one time the gold going down. The fact that this base is still alive means that the income is going to be so darn high for Solar for the next few minutes. I cannot attack up this ramp though. Now a lot of the army is coming together again. Would not mind seeing a couple of extra medivacs. This entire game it felt like these medivacs are so low on energy. Solar moving in, coming from a brilliant flank with these banelings and it feels like these are going to connect no yep there we go lots of marines lots of marauders being taken out no splits yet here out of beyond now is going to start moving back banelings will not quite get the connections that they wanted but they will get some type of connection and once again we have a cost efficient fight while at the same time a single ultra took out 10 workers all of a sudden, Bion is out of money, and I don't think he quite has the money to replenish. He still is mining a lot of gas, he's mining a lot of minerals. I mean, we're working off of, what, eight orbital commands right now. We have five extra barracks just producing marines one at a time. I think Bion actually needs to take it slow, at least for a little bit. Triple mine production, more marauders. Just chill near ramps, make sure that with the sensor towers you have the vision, and then... Hopefully, eventually, you will be capable of taking a good fight. But I really believe that this medevac count is too low. One more stim and all these medevacs are out of energy. We see some good kiting back right now. Mines are going to hit in a big way. Mutas are finding some damage though on this top side. Ghost will finally clear these mutas as they manage to snipe out six, seven, eight mutas even, perhaps. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this planetary can be taken out. There's no more bane links here to deal with with these SCVs. Uh, one more Baneling blocked behind the Ultra. Needs to connect with these SCVs so badly. Repair such a powerful ability and eventually the planetary will end up going down. Can we see a couple more snipes perhaps? Mines coming in with the flank but the Banelings, will they connect with the mines before they get good connections? No, they will not. Lots of Ultras are dying but 34 SCVs have fallen at the same time as well. It's 98 army supply, excuse me, 103 army supply against 72 right now. Solar is still mining from this base, but I'm not sure if the Baneling count is enough. There's a lot of mines in this army. Can they burrow in time? Yes, they can. Baneling's in the far back. Not getting the connections yet with the ghosts. Not getting the connections with the marines yet either. But Solar once again taking an okay-ish fight. Clearing up a lot of the mines that were here at the front. There's still a couple of mines I can only imagine at the back. Um, yep, there we go. Three mines over here. Would love to have these in this fight here as it's a pure Ling Bane versus Marine Marauder Ghost Struggle at this point. Mines could play such a huge role in this, uh, in holding this position. Gold is going to get taken out, and that means with the next wave 
of mules from the orbital commands. I think that Bian might just be okay. But before that happens, we have another fight. All of these units are extremely low on health. Mines are going to get a couple of connections. Medivax are practically out of energy. Ghosts are going to snipe the Ultra down. A couple of Banelings also going to get sniped right now. Eight more Banelings do remain. Eight more Ghosts remain as well. We have a single mine. Nine Marauders, 24 Marines. But all of these Marines are within the one-shot range of the Banelings. Banelings moving in will not get the connections that they need. As Beyond stims forward, continues pushing on. More Medivacs should arrive relatively soon. And will be capable of healing up this army at least to a decent amount of health. More banings are in production. Drones are long distance mining. Solar's running out of money though. Here we go with the connections of the banings of the links. Mutas are just kind of hanging around. We see Cloak being used. GG gets called. Dion wins this game here on Stargazer. It's a very interesting and action-packed Terran vs. Zerg game. Which eventually kind of yeah, revolved a little bit around this gold base. But mainly around the fights that Solar took. He took some really good fights in the mid game. In the late stage of the mid game. Um, but yeah, in the end, it just barely was not enough. That is going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this game. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you so much, and bye-bye.